back, folks, to another scorching episode of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. This is episode 39, and we are very stoked and excited to have, uh, well, <laughs> it's beyond stoked and excited because we are, we're fanboys when it comes to uh, Rockwell Razors, but we have Gareth Everett of Rockwell, Rockwell Razors with us today. Welcome to the show, Gareth. Thanks, man. I am super excited to be here. First kind of live streaming gig, uh, so this is this is pretty cool. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm so nervous that I haven't even introduced our, us yet. Uh, I'm Douglas Smythe from Phoenix Arson Accoutrements.com. Below, we have Scott, the clean shaver of thecleanshaver.com. Yes, he's got a domain. I have a now. website now. No, it's... <laughs> and we, we have David Gonzalez, wherever he is, from so sharp limited.com, folks. Uh, we will be your, well, your panelists today in this um, epic interview we are anticipating. <laughs> so Great. welcome to the show everyone and again to our audience members you guys are the lifeblood of the show it's your questions it's your whatever else you do that really je ne sais quoi. You, yes you're, je ne sais quoi. they have a sentence je ne sais quoi. <laughs> <laughs> and they certainly do <laughs> whatever the hell else you guys no, we've do. already gone there wow but, uh, so let's just begin <laughs> so welcome to the show garrett uh and typically, I know you're familiar with our format. We begin with, well, the beginning, how uh, you came into the wet shaving world, what route, what door you came in, as opposed to all of us. Uh, so we just want your story. And, yeah, uh, absolutely. Start. So uh, I guess my story and the beginning of Rockwell as well is uh, Morgan and I, my co-founder at Rockwell, and I met uh, in third year at university, um, and he was buying old straight razors on like from estate sales or eBay or wherever he found them, um, honing them up because his grandfather had taught him how to hone and sharpen and uh, replace wood scales. And he was then like flipping them on Etsy for, for a profit. And yeah. I kind cool. of through him learned about wet shaving and uh, we were, you know, I guess the entrepreneurial types and we're thinking, Oh, what did, what could we do in this space? And realized quickly that, that it was pretty difficult to make a very good straight razor right off the bat and that it might be more interesting to be and then i don't know how much innovation there is to do on like a timeless technology like a straight razor um yeah. so we did identify that we could do some innovation on a double-edged safety razor uh so we knew right away i was a new wet shaver and i had a hard time with aggressive razors but morgan loves aggressive razors he shaves with a straight razor um right so we were like what can we do that would make uh, a razor that's kind of good for anyone, like good for me and good for Morgan. So we came up with adjustability. We knew that we wanted to make it in stainless steel to be a differentiator. And we knew, uh, I guess, ultimately, we decided just kind of point of principle, it would be made in America. Uh, so that's kind of how the idea for the Rockwell success was born. Uh, and we came up with the flippable base plate concept. And uh, yeah, kind of from there, uh, we realized that the best place to test feedback on a, a new product would be Kickstarter. So we launched a Kickstarter campaign for the Rockwell success during our senior year of university, just set it live on like a Tuesday night uh, with a goal of $12,000, woke up and it had done $18,000 and it <laughs> beat, met its funding goal. And uh, there was obviously demand for an adjustable double-edged safety razor. So uh, that kind of went from there. And obviously there's been a ton, a ton of ups and downs since then. Uh, that people may or may not be familiar with. I'm sure we'll dive into them today. But yeah, that's kind of the the answer to the how did it start question. Very cool. It's it's really you know, I forgot to mention this at the beginning, but uh, what we were doing right now in the Wet Chairs Roundtable for those who are just turning in for the tuning in for the first time is we're featuring different, well, spotlighting rather different vendors and artisans that will be participating at uh, the Big Shave West happening this April 23rd in Pasadena at Old Town Shaving. And we are so stoked to have Rockwell with us yet again. Yeah. <laughs> it's the second year. Yeah. So uh, it's just great to have you guys there again. Uh, well, you know, you touched upon the problems. So let's just start with that. Uh, well, not necessarily the problems, but well, first of all, success. Is there a, play, a word play in there? Is that intentional? Um, it actually, we only, this is funny. We, uh, my girlfriend hooked us up with like a, filmographer, pretty much like a, a film student at U of T University of Toronto who filmed their first Kickstarter video. And we went through the entire Kickstarter video saying 6S, the Rockwell 6S. And like months later, we like sent her a picture and we were like, oh, can you edit this to be this? And she was like, what do you, why does it say Rockwell 6S? It's called the Rockwell Success. And we are like, no, it's it's the 6S. And she was like, <laughs> I swear to God, this entire time I thought it was the Rockwell Success. So yeah, no, it, wasn't, no, I, it wasn't a play. It actually means six sizes. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I guess it 
it no, sounds it like. No, it was intentional. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the, I mean, our new one Clever. called the Rockwell Model Freudian T. Slip. Yeah. <laughs> the, the new one called the Rockwell Model T is supposed to be Model Twist. And everyone was like, oh, the Model T car. And I mean, yeah. we're not like, we're not not encouraging kind of a familiarity. Sure. But definitely like 6S was six sizes and Model T was Model Twist. And it's just like, yeah. I think. Yeah, no, lots of jokes winning. Made. Hashtag yeah. winning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'll be the next one. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, okay, so you, you've had some problems, but you've also had some small victories as well, or maybe large victories now as, as we speak. But uh, start uh, off with yeah. the problems. The whole... like, their Kickstarter's at like $153,000. It's like three <laughs> times their goal. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, let's run through <laughs> that whole process because I remember it was totally. a big – a big thing let's, let's just take it away yeah absolutely and anyone um interested in i don't know if someone wants to drop in a link but if you you can actually read the whole story later if you want i venture beat had me publish a guest post on it it's just an article called uh my how my kickstarter blew up my life so oh, if you yeah. google venture beat kickstarter blew up my life you'll find it it actually went kind of big in like the tech community which was cool but anyways i will give the well, I just, here. I would just like to, you can also find that on the rockwell uh rockwell razors.com <laughs> under the blog section right yes you can yeah. Yeah. So just, yeah. That's uh, easier for you to find people. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> uh, so essentially what happened was we, we knew we were going to make, uh, we had originally decided we would make a Rockwell success in investment casting um, when we didn't know how big the Kickstarter would go um, because the because investment casting had a very low upfront cost and we could get into it and start making at scale. What we knew we didn't want to do is just machine another razor because like, there are lots of machined razors out there and we wanted to be able to have a uh, adjustable razor at a very, very good price point. Um, so we knew we needed scalable manufacturing. Our options were investment casting and metal injection molding. So first we went with investment casting um, and we found a manufacturer in the American Mid Midwest. So it was an American manufacturer and they were like yep this is great this is what it's going to look like this is what the razor will look like and they showed us a really really nice um what's called the first article that they made mm -hmm. um and uh essentially a first article of manufacturing is what a manufacturer shows you that says this is what we this is what the full production will look like once you pay us so the first article looked amazing um right. and uh, we went forward with production and went down to a third-party logistics center, which was actually going to help us with shipping. Third-party logistics for uh, is essentially an uh, external warehouse where you can store your, your stuff, especially for Canadians. They're very useful so that we don't have to ship back into the States from Canada. Um, right. So just keeping all of your product in the States, it's very useful. And we were in school full-time and to didn't fully have time to be like what we thought, shipping thousands of products. That was kind of our perception. So mm -hmm. all that together, we kind of, the manufacturer and the third party logistics got together and everyone learned how to like assemble the razor. Um, and then they went forward with a full production. But what we didn't know is they had no intention of making a high quality product. They knew that they could see that we'd raised over a hundred thousand dollars on Kickstarter at this point. Um, so what they did is they made, I mean, what everyone knows is the result of the first Rockwell success. It didn't really meet anyone's expectations, including ours. Um, and they shipped it right to the 3PL. The 3PL didn't know better because they don't know razors. They just assembled it and started shipping it out. Um, and so the first thing that kind of popped up on Reddit, you know, in, in January 2015 was like, I got my Rockwell and it kind of sucks. And I was like, well, how's that possible? Like the, the first article looks amazing. If I have it in my hand, it looks great. So we call up the manufacturer like, hey, what's going on? Did something like slip through QC? And they're like, eh, I don't really know, but we have your money. So like, go screw yourself. So we haven't heard from them since pay then. Pay half up front. Always pay half up front. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not how manufacturing works when you don't have terms, unfortunately, that's true. That's um, true. when you're a small startup run by two 20-year-olds. 20, 20 <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, essentially we had to bring all the parts back from the third-party logistics. It was just in my parents' basement. We had like 5,000 razors, I want to say, 5,000 razors worth of parts. Uh, went through a have, couple. Do you, still have, do you still have them? Uh, we have a lot of them, yeah, because we obviously <laughs> wow. didn't ship them out. We have some pretty good handles. People like the handles. The heads weren't very nice. nice. But yeah, if anyone wants lots of handles, uh, hold on, handles. Be careful what you say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually true. Yeah. Um, so, uh, hey, they make great Christmas presents. It was a good stocking stuffer if you like yeah. handles. Um, better way to say I love you than with a gift of a handle. A handle. Nice. Love handles. So, we, yeah, we brought them back. We... Um, <laughs> We 
took them to a, ma a machinist in Toronto who was going to, uh, a lot of the issues, just for anyone not familiar with the story, was the cap warped the blade, so it kind of put a smile on the blade, and that happened in the cooling stage of manufacturing. So, um, yeah, so we tried to have someone just pretty much cut down, I've got a 6S here, I can show you, um, cut down on the underside of the cap, like right along here, they run a machine right along this, um, mm -hmm. and that would flatten it out. And so we were kind of in-house with those machinists, and he showed us him do it a few times, and we were like, this is great, he's totally solved the problem, and the critical dimensions are good. So we, again, foolishly, blindly trusted a professional and gave him our money, and then he immediately outsourced that task to someone else who like did a terrible job, and as many people know, um, massively increased the blade gap. So the 6S ended up being like what was supposed to be size one ended up being more like size six. And size six was like size mega 12 and like <laughs> like shaving with the worst straight razor of all time. Um, yeah. So that wasn't great. And th again, this is like, it's all consistency issues too. So some of them actually ended up good and you'll see comments, people are like, I have my first generation success and it's awesome and I love it. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. And there are other people who are like, I, I don't like this. So essentially what we said is like, we have to make it right with every single person. Like there's no, there's no way around this. Um, we just have to straight up make it right. And this is, I've got uh, probably like two months left in school at this point. So we pretty much went forward with MIM manufacturing, metal injection molding. We went back to another factory, uh, again, in the States. They could, it's one of the few metal injection molding places that exist in the States. Um, and uh, we went forward with production with them. And about eight months later, we were able to produce uh, an amazing razor that I'm really, really proud of. So I've got just a few of them here, the parts in my in my hands. I think this is the only one we haven't shipped out at this point. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it. great. Hold it Can you hold it up to close to the camera? Yeah, I totally Let's disassembled it. So let me, let me <laughs> like one second to reassemble it. Uh, and the, so the, just the big point is he gave away one of these, the new Rockwell 6S, for free to every single Kickstarter backer and pre-order customer, just to make it right with every single person, because I think we felt that you know they had been the early supporters, so uh, they should absolutely be the first to get the new Razor. Bush, so and that, that, that was uh, back in September, right? This is back, we finished shipping everything out in like <clears throat> February, just this past oh, February. Wow. Um, of course, okay. Yeah, so everything finally got out. We announced um, it on the show at some point, and I, don't, I thought it was farther back, but okay, right on. Go on, um, I'm sorry. We, to we, started, <laughs> we started shipping out like before, but um, at this point, we're not shipping through a 3PL. It was like literally, Morgan's just temporarily back at school in Ottawa, Canada, and I'm in Toronto. So we're shipping from Toronto, and so it was just me and sometimes my like little brother helping me pack razors up. And when you're doing that, and it's not just razors, we've got like stands and blades and all sorts of other stuff. Um, sure. So it does take a little while. I'm, I'm caught up now, so we're good. Um, but definitely like packing up thousands and thousands and thousands of razors took a bit of time. So yeah, we gave them away for free to everyone. And uh, now I guess the, the reviews have been fantastic. I'm really, really happy with how it's gone. I, I don't think I've seen like a strongly negative review that I haven't been able to solve by sending them just a replacement razor. The only issues are like one or two things that slip through quality control, but I think we've shipped sure. out like several thousands of razors and like maybe 10 people have said like, oh, this, you know, we got a little thing. So, yes, so I mean, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yes, everything's been uh, able. Yeah, everything looks great. Um, so we're moving forward, and uh, the the phenomenal news is we keep now being able and to, I guess, make the uh, release the new Rockwell take on adjustability in the Rockwell Model T, which is a uh, the only modern adjustable twist to open. Uh, and so we launched that less than a week ago. It's been up on Kickstarter. I think it's about to hit $140,000 raised in under a week. So definitely looking like there's still a lot of support for adjustable safety razors. And I'm excited to uh, grow Rockwell from here. I think that's oh, the, that's sure. like the story. For sure. I mean, like when I, the, the... and, uh, and just, for the, uh, just, just real quick, Douglas, um, just for those people that are not familiar with your website, some people may be seeing you for the first time. Is the Rockwell yeah. Success yeah, still absolutely. available? Yeah, absolutely. So the Rockwell Success, just we, um, site because now. of some very good reviews that came out from, I guess, more uh, uh, higher profile uh, wet shavers, we actually sold out of like all of the Rockwell Successes. So we're ramping up production right now. Uh, they're on like reservation, essentially, the same way like an iPhone would be on reservation. Um, and we're shipping them out later this month once we get the next round in. So they're readily available, and the Rockwell Model T will be shipping out, we expect, in March 2017. So it, it, it's a little ways off on finishing up manufacturing, taking, making 
good new things does take some time, but I'm grateful that there's a platform like Kickstarter where we can gauge interest in the product well in advance of having to like fully commit thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars to manufacturing it. So, yeah. And what me what what measures are you taking to make sure that your manufacturer is holding up its quality control and really you know holding them accountable because you've been to two manufacturers already they pretty much yeah screwed so you this guys. one is oh, what's yeah. the difference now with <laughs> yeah. this manufacturer we've uh, we've actually and confirmed all of the manufacturing with them in advance um the what we didn't do last time that was a rookie mistake that we now know a lot better is something called critical dimensions and putting legal uh pretty much legal recourse in place that if the products don't hit what is called critical dimensions, then you don't need to accept the product. So that's now built into all of our manufacturing contracts, which has really upped our ability to, to I guess, when things don't go right for whatever reason, there's a way to kind of overcome that um, that doesn't involve your investment casting manufacturer to go essentially tell you to screw yourself and they have all your money. So right. we're pretty, we're extremely confident um, with the manufacturers we've chosen for the Model T. So I'm not expecting problems there. Excellent. Excellent. That's great. Scott? That's awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see. I actually have, uh, I've had a few people that have asked me, uh, I, I've like asked people if they have questions that they would like to ask during this, uh, uh, during this segment. And um, one in particular was, uh, he said he's already backed it. He's really stoked. But uh, how would you rate the aggression versus smoothness of the razor compared to some of the common favorites? I'm assuming like, um, uh, Mule R89 or Edwin Jagger DE89. Okay, yeah, um, yeah. I like. I don't. To be oh, honest, I don't. I, I find this is always like a funny question to answer because, like, I don't really shave with a Rockwell razor and then like pull out my other ones and start like trying them against each other. So all I can really say is like, when other people mention that, then I can kind of go from there. But then again, like, it totally that stuff does vary from person to person. So the sure. best thing I can say is the Rockwell success. And the Rockwell, like the Rockwell Model T size settings line up perfectly with the Rockwell success. So anyone who like has a success, that's what the Model T will feel like. Um, right. the, like it's engineered, the head is engineered like exactly the same angles and everything. So um, uh, other than that, I'd say what I've heard is that uh, the Rockwell size one and like somewhat up to size two are very similar to the like Feather ASD2 um, and up to the uh, Rockwell size six would be similar to like your more aggressive end razors as well. And then uh, like your, the average kind of most common razors you'd find on Amazon will be so, somewhat a Rockwell size three, size four, which is good because that was our okay. intention that it kind of spans the whole range of like no chance of cutting yourself super mild all the way up to like, yeah, you like aggressive razors, go nuts with the R6. So sounds like hopefully mission awesome. accomplished, but yeah, sorry, I, I, I it's just, Sometimes people are like, "Here's a chart of razors, and tell me like which size the Rockwell lines up with." I'm like, "I don't, I don't know, man. I don't own all those things." Yeah, that that, that that's an yeah. extremely difficult uh, question to answer because totally. you know your the blade you use is gonna uh, be a variable totally. there, and if you're like if you're hungover even, in general, or if, like is gonna also to take be a human being. Like it's, it's all yeah. Coffee yeah. in the morning, and aside <laughs> from all of that is. What if you've never used the razors they're trying to compare them to? That's I get questions like that. It's like, how does your razor compare to? And it's like, I don't have that razor. Yeah, people are like, how does it compare to a 1942 Gillette Fab? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't own that. So. Don't ever assume we have all these razors, folks. <laughs> True. I get people that ask me all the time. <laughs> and I, I heard you say that. <laughs> Oh, well, I heard you say that you don't use your Rockwell razor and then whip out another razor to compare. Um, do you exclusively use the Rockwell weight razors or do you have a particular No, I other do use the Rockwell like a, success. A, a I actually, of as you can see, I use I keep stubble and then I do a bit of a beard lineup. I take weekends off, but I use the Rockwell R3 to line up here, along there, and right over here. And that's nice. that's my deal. Um, and usually if I'm super hungover, I'll uh, I'll do the R1 or R2, and if it's like a super humid day, I'll move up to like R4, R5, R6 is like a little bit much for me. Um, but you know, you're, I, you're, I totally hear people love it. So some people you, not you bring all. up a very very interesting point that a lot of people don't think about, and it's actually a great tip. Is uh yeah a hangover or just waking up in the morning, your skin you're sometimes puffier, so it's good to wait before you actually shave too, as opposed to shaving right when you get up sometimes. Or dialing down on your adjustable razor. Or, yeah, or, or dialing down on your Rockwell 
a Model T. Adjustable yeah. it. <laughs> Available next March. <laughs> no, I, actually, Douglas, now that you mentioned that, uh, actually that you mentioned that, Douglas, I just had a conversation with a salt maker yesterday. Um, not somebody from the Facebook groups, but somebody that just kind of does like aromatherapy type stuff with essential oils and God knows what else. And he actually recommended to, um, if you if you have a lavender uh, soap, to actually wash your face with that night yeah. that'll help well, with that with the puffiness I don't in the morning my, that my hot towel of. videos but yeah i put lavender oil on them before i put it on to yeah, uh, so it's the best to it's, it dials down um inflammation that's what lavender essential oils are supposed to yeah. be quite good at yeah yeah um, much much like you douglas if you're not talking about me in your videos i'm just not going to watch uh, i only got so much time scott i have another take... question for uh for you gareth um <laughs> have you have you ever put any thought into doing an open comb? Um, like a we've, heard, open comb? we've heard some we've heard some requests for it. Uh, in like full transparency, my goal ultimately with Rockwell is more to bring <laughs> classic shaving to people who aren't familiar with classic shaving. Um, I okay. think that's like a really big part of the like the lower size settings on the adjustability, and then the higher settings would allow a newbie to kind of. Try, try lots of different things. Um, the open comb to me is like very much like a classic, someone who's familiar with classic shaving, it's definitely a product tailored to them. So I'm not gonna say like, no, we're not going to make one, but it's definitely like lower on my priority list than products that would make a new wet shaver feel welcome, if that sure. makes sense. Um, yeah. Also like an important thing to note is it's, uh, it's, it's pretty expensive to modify our molds um, for, for metal injection molding. Um, so there would definitely be there would have to be some mechanism proving that there's significant demand for an open comb um and mm -hmm. anecdotally people like calling for it on reddit or on facebook like for me as a data-driven entrepreneur I, it, it's not really like enough quantifiable feedback but hey if you guys like totally flood my inbox with we need an open comb requests maybe don't do that right now but like in a few <laughs> months or something um if you guys flood my inbox then yeah I'll definitely well, you have other stuff on your plate right now i mean <laughs> Yeah. Well, we've got we've got the Model T, so be excited about that one, and then you guys can start totally drilling down on me to make an open comb. We'll okay, so you got the razors. Now tell us about the blades. Yeah, yeah. I got some blades right over here. We got our yeah. 100 pack little yes. little thing. I can pull it pull out my five packs. So these are sweet. Um, this is like a really really big important part of the Rockwell package for me. Um, I think like it drove me nuts when I was first like getting into classic shaving and you'd buy like almost any razor you buy, they're like, hello, here's our razor. And then like, here are some Chinese blades or like, here are some, whatever, like some, some crap blades some for other me. blades that like you don't uh, like, that's not our brand. And for me, I was like, that, that totally doesn't make any sense. So I kind of looked high and low for someone who would make blades for us. And we found a, uh, a manufacturer who, who uh, I guess it wouldn't be, a traditional one that people would be familiar with, um, but they they made incredible quality blades. We tested a whole bunch of different ones. We we put through a, like total, put it through the ringer on uh, on different like angles and arches and everything on the blades, and we really kept it like pretty quiet. And then just released it along with the new Rockwell Success. And people people seem to like them a lot. I mean, blades are so subjective. So sometimes you hear people being like, "I don't like these blades at all," but I'm hearing a lot more. I do like them than I don't like them. So for me, if you can get like 51% and over with blades, I count that as a win. Um, yeah. So, yeah. It's true. <laughs> no, that is really, I, I looked at the making blades a couple of years back and uh, yeah. I commend you because that is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, yeah. <laughs> I went through so many different, oh my, all over the world even. It's just like, yeah. just trying to explain the concept. Like, no, I don't want your blades. I want my own blades, yeah. my own branded blades. Just to even get that into that conversation is. Yeah, yeah. It's, Google um, Translate doesn't help either, but I mean. Yeah. It's a, I yeah, it's hard. You're just, uh, I think, yeah. It, there's a lot of stuff that for, uh, I think it's cool. There's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Like when you're, when you're a producer, especially like in this space, there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes to like make something. So uh, yeah, it's oh, yeah. definitely knowing everything that came into like making the blades and being able to release them or even the Model T, like even where we're at, it's not like even fully manufactured, but like, like being able to be like, here it is, this is where we're at so far. And right. it's like so much has gone into this already. 
It's like, yeah. Well, you know, and that's another thing I got to commend you on as well, because I mean, we, there's a lot of like, though we still have vintage adjustable razors in existence, that's a lot of la lost technology there on how they actually produced them. So you pretty much had to refigure that out how to. Yeah, we literally took them apart. That. We took yeah. them apart like, like tons. We just took them apart. That's all. Yeah. That's what we had to do. We had to like 3D image them. We had like scanners. It looks like like the scanner thing, and you like 3D image them and start piecing them together. Yeah. Um, and we've made a ton of changes like to materials that they used. Pretty much we were able to like take what they made back in the 50s and be like, yep. if if you could start this first principles, how should an adjustable twist to open be? Um, then we had the opportunity to make that with like no bias or no precedent, just kind of looking like that's how they made it. If we had full control, how would we make it knowing exactly. that this is how a functional one is made? Um, so, so yeah, that's kind of where we went from there. For Working the, with what's available today, like yeah, and being like, okay, there's obviously there's going to be opportunities. So there, we have like little posts. Actually, I wish Michael Ham has the Model T right now, so I, I unfortunately can't show it. But we even have like little posts on the side of the cap, to, like absolutely dial in blade alignment. Like there's so many like little tweaks we were able to make. Um, that yeah, I'm super excited about, and we'll be kind of showing close ups and more pictures of that as the Kickstarter campaign goes along. Yeah, cool. well, uh, yeah, Giorgio really... Corrado has a has a question for you over in the comment section over here. Um, any question? He's a fellow Canadian, by the way. Sweet. Um, any plans on selling these razors uh, via? I'm assuming B&M is Barrister Man. No, uh, no, brick and, mortar. Dealers. brick and mortar. Brick and mortar. Oh, brick and mortar. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, brick and mortar is... or online dealers in the future. Yeah, that is in the plan. If there are any retailers or wholesalers that we have an arrangement with to be selling through you and you haven't received it yet, I'm super sorry. We are making them as soon as possible. <laughs> we, uh, we've, we, yeah, there are lots of people who are interested in stocking it. Uh, I've been having conversations uh, and we're simply waiting until like, it was our number one priority to make sure that all of the Kickstarter pre-order customers get them first. Um, and that plus we're like, okay, great. We have like, many many razors now that we can start giving to, to wholesalers and then like this one big review went up on reddit and the venture beat article went live and they were all wiped out in like like four hours all oh, yeah. of them every single one so uh yeah uh it's not yeah, a terrible yeah, problem that's to have. That's yeah. a no problem i'm not to complaining right um yeah. but we're definitely i'm excited to uh, it sucks like uh, there are so many great people in the community and they're like oh i'd love to carry a razor and i was like i i would love that too like it'll be early mm -hmm. march and then like that just totally got blown out of the water. And I'm like, please just wait, like give me a few more weeks. We're ramping up production, yeah. I, I promise. And it'll be here soon. It's tough when it's out of your control. As soon as it's out of your control, it's just yeah. like, well, we're, a date or give anyone a date. Like it's, we're it's, waiting too. I know. It's, a, it's, it's, it's hard. more you frustrating got, to you than it is yeah. to them even, you know? So, I mean, it's I kind it. of, yeah. It's, uh, it's funny. It, it's manufacturing is, is hard in some ways because we don't want to overcommit like on inventory i don't you know i'm 22 and we just sent out hundreds hundreds of thousands of dollars of free product so i'm not really in a position where i want to be like over committing on inventory but also by under committing i've like it sucks cause yeah I yeah that's the so. problem that uh italian barber ran into i mean like it's t you know it pisses a lot of people off it's tough to win it's tough to walk that balanced line and make everybody happy yeah uh, yeah, it, you're it, doing it, a great it, job. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're still we're still operating. So, uh, okay, I got I got I got a question. Tell us about Miss May. The band, the Playboy Center oh. of Last May. <laughs> Where do I have it? Do I have it? Hang on. Oh yeah, under your bed. <laughs> yeah. No, hang on. I might actually. No, maybe not. I might have sent it to Morgan. Yeah, um, I pretty much have a buddy who we, um, uh, my roommate in university was in media and information technologies. Um, so pretty much met through like a friend. We had like a, a guy who does PR and eventually just using his help, we got in contact with a few people uh, in like PR and one of them included a uh, editor at Playboy. Uh, so like totally outrageous considering like we're such a small company but we did get yeah. featured in like a playboy gift guide which is kind of hilarious and just like for morgan and i were like high five that's awesome and like it, it totally yeah, yeah. drove zero sales for us and it like was not an important business move um but we were in playboy 
That's well, true. You, know, you can I still put on your on your website video. as seen in Playboy. Yeah, so <laughs> and, now we and pass out a centerfold of your razor. Yeah, <laughs> just like, we uh, we we just updated the site to say that. I was like, we did get in Playboy. Oh, you... We might as well. We might as well put that on there. Like we yeah. we did do it. So yeah. Um, seen in Playboy. That just sounds awesome. It, it is. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's pretty cool. I think it was June. That's why I was like, Miss May. I was like, what? I think it was, I think it was June. I totally wish. Oh, no, no, no. I've done my research. <laughs> <laughs> you have done your research. Awesome. No, I can't find it. Must just send it off to Morgan. Right on, right on. <laughs> Scott, what you got? Awesome. Um, let's see. Talk uh, about shave wait. porn. Awesome. That's one of the questions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, what about uh, weight uh, expectation? What what can people expect for the Model T as far as weight and feel? From brass, heavy as hell. Yeah, nice and heavy. yeah, that's the plan. I'm I'm going for like exactly the same weighting as the 6S. Like whatever I can do to kind oh. of manipulate things around to be the same weight as the 6S. That's what we're going to go for. Um, it means a little bit of tweaking around the head and like being very careful about materials around the head because obviously the 6S is solid stainless steel at the head, um, and the T Model T is a twist open, so it's not just a big block of stainless steel. So um, that'll take a little bit of you know finicking around to making sure that it happens. Um, but we're we're in all of the engineering drawings. It's weighted almost exactly like the success right now. So it's just a question of making sure. Again, it's the manufacturing question. It's in. It's called for in the manufacturing prints and everything, and it's been confirmed that it can be done. Now it just needs to be manufactured and confirmed that that's correct, and we go iterate from there in production. So I'm I'm anticipating it'll be the same weight. Awesome. Very cool. I was just going to ask. Are you going to have a? Uh, one, yeah, one we, will. Model, we will. Are you going to have one of the Model Ts there? Because um, I will be there. I will be there probably when you're <laughs> setting up, and I will be a child wanting to wanting to try. And I may even ask ask okay. you to shave with it if I could shave with it at the show. I'll bring a little bowl with some warm water, nice. and we'll do a yeah, demo. We're going to really get the party in, started. That is right the now. only setting where shaving with a razor in front of a bunch of other people would be considered getting the party started. But, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, obviously, anyone's welcome to you know try it out. So that, well, so that just have a jar of barber, barber, barber side. I'm with it. <laughs> yeah. We're going to move. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make, make it happen, working. baby. I'm gonna be the first one. To what about above the top? With you, at you the big the same thing to everyone. I, I'm throwing, throwing my the show. You get a lot of people to hound, David. <laughs> I've already, I've already shaved with an above the tie. It's new one though. Which, you made the same the promises, man. Fantastic. I'm just calling you on this. People yeah, remember I this. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna have to like this part. Hey, I'll shave half of my. I'll shave half of my. I have an advantage here. <laughs> top and bottom <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah i'm pretty close i'm about to call it myself so <laughs> <laughs> so for those watching and who will be attending the big shave uh gareth will also be part of our panel discussion we're going to be having there as well and i you know I'm still coming up with uh topics for the discussion but that's going to be uh mc that i believe by ryan stephen green uh so yeah we're going to have a lot of people and you know and luke also from uh luke webster from uh, Blades Grimm will also be on the panel. I just found out today as well. Cool. So we get a full on. Like, we got Luke. We got Con. We got Nathan Clark. We got Ryan. We got Mantic. We got Matt Basarsic. Uh It's going to be a pretty epic panel where it stands now. I can't wait to see who else ends up on that too. So again, what are we to expect from you at the Big Shave West, Garrett? I mean, what are the, some surprises that are going to be? Well, you, you can definitely bring? expect the Model T will be there for uh, people to check out and kind of you know just get a closer look at it. Um, it's, I think it's with Michael Ham right now, so we're going to be getting it back pretty soon. And I think it'll be the first time that the Model T will be available for viewing in America, I believe. Um, so, yeah, that'll be pretty sweet. And uh, we'll have, hopefully, successes to... No, we will have successes uh, for the fine folks over there to sell. Wait, uh, six anyone interested? S oh, oh, six <laughs> S's. I had to... Yeah, six S's. It's, it's a little awkward when it's like a six S capital apostrophe s yeah, when, I yeah. it's weird. when you say um, success in quick succession it makes it really hard to say quick but it also makes sense succession. <laughs> succession six yeah uh yeah so those will be there people um i think we'll be giving away like a lot of rockwell blades to anyone kind of coming through cool. the door the idea is anyone who drops by the table i'm sure we'll just be giving them away because i want everyone to try try some rockwell blades and uh yeah i think we'll just be hanging out and anyone who wants to kind of talk about the 
I think Rockwell has a bit of a, a unique story and a little bit, you know, a, a, so somewhat unusual, at least for classic shaving. Um, so obviously I'm an open book and anyone interested in kind of learning more, but behind the scenes stuff is, is you know, welcome to fire away questions in person. What were you passing out last year? Were you passing out razor, were you, the sheaths? Which is yeah, awesome. we were giving out Rockwell sheaths. Yeah. Yes. yeah I, don't I You know, I got one, one, but I didn't get one. I, I, I came home and I could not find it. I don't know what the hell I did with the thing. But, like, uh, I will get you another one. We got tons. <laughs> yeah. That's just, that's just incredibly careless of you, no, uh, no. Douglas. And I don't think you deserve that's another okay. one. If I can, really, like you, you mentioned sheets. Uh, yeah. Shout out to uh, another Kickstarter company that's going to be starting up here in just a minute, or on Monday, actually, their Kickstarter goes live. It's a company called Range Leather. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They made this really sick travel case for, and it's fit just about every single razor that I've put in it. Sweet. It's I'm waiting till you break it in, Scott. When you break that leather in, it's going to it's gonna fit even yeah. more. <laughs> and with all the traveling I'm going to be doing over the next few months, I'm really looking forward to taking this along. Yeah, maybe you know. maybe you can post the preview link to their Would campaign. You? Their campaign looks awesome. I'm oh, really yeah. excited for it to go live. I'm um, going to get them on the show. I just wrote their name down, sweet. so we'll we'll be uh, looking into them. Probably they're not going to be at the Big Shave West, are they? Uh, I don't. Uh, I do not. You know I'll shoot them. We've been in touch. We've been in touch by email or Kickstarter message or something. I'll I'll recommend yeah, it. I don't know please. if he's around yeah. there. Because I, I would gotten, like to get him on sooner than later, and up until the the show, uh, the big shave list, we're just going to be featuring artists and, and uh, vendors. But mm -hmm. if if he's a part of that, I could get him on sooner, and that'd be wonderful. Sweet, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'll email him and see if I can convince him to come. Everybody nice. email him. Just, him. Yeah. <laughs> so just give him a up, <laughs> Open up questions yeah. to our audience members now. Thank you guys for being so patient. Uh, so please, if you have any questions for Garrett on um. On anything Rockwell related, shoot him over. Right. Now. I have other interests. I like dogs. Um, <laughs> no cats. <laughs> nice. Uh, you can ask me about Canada. Canada is kind of weird sometimes. Oh, Canada. Uh, Canada. Dogs. <laughs> Ronnie says I think all of us in America yeah. think so honestly, that Canada, Canada is, a is strange, in America. So that's okay. Hey, but just to add to what you guys were saying, just to add to what you guys were saying about those. Um, those locate those cases there was a company called yeah. wet shaver shields that was at the big shave west last year they have changed their name to salazar and sons and they make cases very similar to that and they are fantastic i have one i use that for travel i don't travel much but i still use it and it is great just the quality the, just it, it's damn near, it's a flawless yeah. piece of north american craftsmanship no, yeah no. It's, it's, it's it's fantastic so you could catch them actually on Instagram. So look up Salazar and Sons. And of course, continue to support those people that are going to be starting their Kickstarter. But um, if it's something that you need a little bit more, uh, you know, a bit quicker, Salazar and Sons, they make wallets. They make a bunch of other leather goods. And they're fantastic. And they pay I can vouch for their qualities. <laughs> they're, they're awesome. JK. Also, um, while we're at it, while we're at the, the shameless plugs. Nice. Hey, Douglas, West. You, you need to put me. Yeah, you, okay. you need to put me on your. Why panel. am I not on the panel? Come on. You are on the panel. Oh yeah. Oh okay. He just didn't mention. You're on so. the panel. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. So it okay. looks like Jeeves. Jeeves. Have you written down as Baldy over here? He didn't so, mention uh, either, Scott. Don't don't feel bad. Sorry, folks. Are we missing any questions? Yeah, Jeeves, <laughs> question from Jeeves. Take it. Uh, do the Rockwell razors use Rockwell blades, such as some of the other new razors coming out? Um, I think if that's referring to like, does it only work with Rockwell blades? No, it works with any any uh, double-edged blades on the market. We are totally proponents of open relationships. Uh, no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, we we like Rockwell blades. We think it's like totally the best value <laughs> on the market. Um, that's why I made it. Uh, but if you have a preferred blade, that's totally fine. Um, I know some people like you know have kind of their blades, and we don't want to exclude them. So yeah, <laughs> right. all blades are welcome. No proprietary blades here, folks. Yeah, you know, which is actually cool. quite refreshing. Yeah, I, I totally understand. Like the business guy inside me is like, I totally get why people would use proprietary blades. It's not for me, but yeah. uh, you can back yourself into a corner really quick with that too. Yeah, exactly. Like, There's yeah. Sony Electronics, devices. for instance, uh, a while back when they were doing you know a lot of digital cameras and and like their batteries and their memory sticks were proprietary to Sony and it bugged the crap out of me. Right. Yeah. So I never bought Sony stuff. It's yeah. short sighted. It's short yeah. I for me as a businessman, that's how I look at it. That's yeah. short sighted. Yeah. Short term win, long term end up winning ultimately. That's, that's yeah. kind of how it works. Yeah. 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 Okay, what else we got, folks? Uh I, I posted the link to the uh to the Kickstarter for Range Leather over on the side. 
Uh, yeah, by the way, as awesome. good as their as good as their cases are, their DOP kits look friggin' amazing. And I, I can't wait to get my hands on one. It is still in preview. But yeah, I think it's good. If anyone wants to go over there and just check it out, there's a little notify me on launch button, which if it if it's interesting mm -hmm. at all, you'll uh you'll get a little email right when they come live. Uh so yep. that's uh which should yeah. be Monday. Okay, yeah. you got another question from Christian. He's asking Sweet. Me, yep. Well, yeah, um, we're we'll in the You don't need to reveal your source with that. That's but okay. I guess it's yeah. just um, country of origin. We like uh, the Rockwell blades are, I, are superior in my opinion. Uh, they are made from uh, Swedish stainless steel. Uh, so what that means is it's just it's a little bit higher quality steel that st it's specifically made to stay sharp a little bit longer when used in razor blades. So that's definitely an advantage. Um, and we just we really work down the arch to be really really efficient at shaving. Uh, Again, it kind of comes down to staying sharp longer. As for where they manufactured, um, it is like definitely a bit of a, a strategic advantage for us right now. So I am going to keep that one close to the chest uh, for the time being. But you know, it will come out in the no, 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 wait, wait, no! I think we should probably probe this a little more. <laughs> Stay sharp longer. All the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. What else wait, we got? Folks? Stealth wait, sharpening blades. They stay sharper longer. <gasps> um, <laughs> yeah. Like I, I, I don't know if like it, again. Not everyone will find that, but in our testing, that was an important thing for me. And once we reached the point that I was confident the, the Swedish stainless steel was staying sharp longer, we went forward. Mm -hmm. But again, blades are so subjective. And like even all blade manufacturing, you can have like dub blades. It happens with like the best blades. So um, blades are kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. really. How, how, how many? How many shades specifically have you been able to get out of one yeah, single blade? I, uh, I know everybody's like, beard types are different, but just specifically like for you. Super skin and like yeah, relatively yeah, thick facial hair. So the most I've gotten are eight shaves over two weeks. Um, but I have heard some people get up to like 10 uh, when they're shaving daily. So, and, and then, you know, there are some people who are like, I will never use one blade more than one shave. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they speak just like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do when I'm speaking about <laughs> No, it's true. Yeah. Uh, if I could, and I, you know, and it's, uh, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> what else we got, folks? We have Garrett from uh, Rockwell Razors with us today. I know you're joining in specifically for this show to ask him questions. Now is the time to ask. Yep. Over in the question section, put slash. Q. Otherwise, we have to watch David eat whatever he's eating, and uh, yeah, it gets old real quick. <laughs> I went to a farmer's market yesterday. They just started a farmer's market in my city, and nice. they fresh roasted peanuts right there in front of me. So I'm eating those <laughs> and drinking a beer, and actually contemplating whether I should join this farmer's market and bring some of my products to the farmer's market. So um, I don't know. It's pretty good. You know, I'm, and I'm just filling up this time frame because I'm sorry, but our, our yeah, audience is not uh, holding up their end like of the bargain and really asking me a pro. Yeah, we did get one. Um, Steve is asking cool. a question. From our I'm it's pretty self-explanatory. Our website, um, and, uh, in the so we'll get them. Is he breaking up, guys, with you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I can't hear him at all. He, Sorry, Gareth, we lost you a little broken up. It's, you've slowed down. You might need to refresh your screen, and then we'll let you back in and uh, to answer the question. There we go. And David, I can't see you. <gasps> I can, but. Oh, lucky you. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah! It's, it's no, a better thing to agree too hard with that one on but. the show. <laughs> you guys could be the brains; I'll be the beauty. I'm got a black screen. I can't see him. It's just a dark right. screen right now. I see that he's been back on, but I can't see him at all. He's been blocked by a firewall, apparently. Canada again. It's it's in Canada. Here with we miss you. Come home. Come I home. Canada. If we all high five him at once. I guess us talking about Canada for a little bit. Maybe their their prime minister up prime. there. Do they have a president yeah, or a prime minister? Okay. Blocked us. Well, we haven't had a hiccup like this in a while. No. Probably me. 
There we go. There we go. It's probably some <laughs> internet connection on his side. I really don't. It's probably not. Wait, where, oh. Uh, the blade is available for purchase. We good? Good. It's it's a little iffy, but it sounds better than before. Okay. Um. Okay. To answer, the, the blades are on razors.com. They're nine ninety nine. That's nine ninety nine for a hundred blades at rockwell dot com currently, folks. Yep, free, so that's cool. I'm super behind. Please ask why we choose to make razors in the USA for Canada based. Able to answer. No Canadian manufacturer would speak to us. That's great. Interesting. We lost you. Oh, crap. Great. Now we're going to have to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah, sorry, Gary. Uh, we, we were to- The connection is totally screwed. But, hey, let me just take this moment right here to let you guys know that SoulSharpLimited.com <laughs> has released a new soap, The Lifestyle. It's a collaboration between SoulSharp Limited and Tiki Bar Soap and <laughs> carrying the matching aftershave and everything. Wow, this has been so a hell of a show today. Go visit Somebody now. said Dalek. Okay. <laughs> We got yeah, yeah, that. That was like Daleks. That was awesome. Wait, did... Daleks. Daleks. Exterminate. Done. Yeah, it does sound like. <laughs> yeah, it's, like the... it's still really iffy, man. Shoot. Switch internet and see if that will solve anything. He says, all I heard was solve I'm anything. I don't know what the hell else he said. Else. Let's see if it solves anything. Just a stab in the dark with that. Time to talk about Arco. Nice. Thank you for reminding me, uh, Trail, Trail Shemate. Like, I will have Paul H. on here very soon. Again, we're just featuring artists and vendors that are in the, uh, or spotlighting, uh, rather, artists and vendors that will be appearing at the Big Shave up until the Big Shave West. Um but Paul H is definitely on my radar, and he will be invited on. I love Paul H. He, that guy makes me. He's the. That is shaving. That is a shaving video. It's positive. It's happy. It's drama free. It's just the guy almost brings me to tears sometimes watching the joy coming out of him as he's. You know, yep. it's just like love I'm making Paul this H. sound dirtier than what it actually is. It's actually just a, he's just a great person to watch. Paul H. What is it? Paul H. Films. Mm-hmm. Paul H. Films on YouTube. Paul H. Films on YouTube. So let me so let me get this straight. You you watch his videos, but you don't watch mine. You're a bastard. I'll just I'll just say that right something now. Something different out of you, out of his than, than yours. Okay, let's try again, Gareth. Yeah. <laughs> More than one syllable. Yeah, but more syllable. Oh, I heard syllable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I guess. Damn it. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, um it's this better. Is this is really... kinda. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna give him some props. See if that helps. It might help. I'm very superstitious with this kind of stuff. Hey. I have lucky socks. <laughs> Got them at CVS, they have razors on them. Nice. We might have to give him a whiteboard and have him start writing what he wants. Yeah. To say. <laughs> hey, hey, guys. Well, just a heads up to Gareth. Um, I just put nice. my my order in for some Rockwell blades, so uh, I'll be getting those in sometime this week, and I'll go ahead and do a little bit of a review for him. I'm looking forward to. Wait, yeah, wait. I'm I'm in the process of checking out right now since he's been in and out with he's his looking, okay uh, poor Speak, internet connection. Gareth. Speaking, I'm speaking. Is this better? Hey! Are we back? Yes. Oh, okay. Me. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to get through as many of these questions before things go to shit again. Um, uh, how was the experience of the Sharpologist podcast? It sounded great to listen to. It was awesome. Um, Andrew's amazing. Uh, really, really good experience with him. Uh, I was super excited to kind of share the story with everyone. Um, are we still good? The connection's good? It's yeah. great. It's great. Uh, I was just, Doug's like giving me this look like... Oh no, I'm, I'm reading questions. That look wasn't for you. That was uh, this looks for yeah, you. Like, that was for other people. Nice. Uh, yeah. That's a good one. I like that. <laughs> Thank you. I, I practice. Oh, Gareth, uh, 
Uh, Garrett, just, just a quick question. Do you ship the blades yeah, out yourself? Yeah, we do it all ourselves right now. We're in the process of trying to like get ships. someone to help because it's hard for me to like ship everything and do the Model T campaign. Kickstarter is super demanding on time. So, um, yeah, we're, we're working on it. Anyone else? I'm sorry. Well, I don't know if you heard, but I just I just ordered some Rock Roll razors right Thanks. now. I just got my confirmation. So just a heads up. I'm gonna. Uh, I'll be That's doing awesome. a video, so check that out on my Let's YouTube page. Oh, I'll got your order a, on my phone. A review on it. Cool. And nice. There nice. we go. Um, <laughs> nice. For that. When might the Rockwells be available in the UK? Very, very soon. Uh, they will be available through Executive Shaving. Uh, if you want to buy direct from the UK, and in the meantime, uh, we do ship to the UK. But uh, if you'd rather wait for your local retailer to carry it, totally cool. And uh, Executive Shaving will have it uh, in hopefully like late April. Uh, if not early May. Um, what's the scent profile for a razor? Mm, stainless steel. <laughs> it smells a lot Ozone. of steel. Yeah. yeah. No, no. That a little would bit be like gross. motor oil. Um, yeah. That'd be a straight no, razor, most, maybe. It, yeah, it mostly <laughs> smells like um, steel. Uh, <laughs> when will Paul H join you on here? I can kick him in real life on Monday if you want. I don't know if that's directed at me. Um, oh, we already uh, answered that. Oh, okay. Then I missed that. In your absence. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, did I miss anything that wasn't necessarily Q stamped? Is he on Rogers or Bell? I answered that in the text. I am on Bell, and I will no longer be on Bell after this call. That will be. Bell is like our <laughs> Warner and everything. That's yeah. like we have the nah, same. Just, deal. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just GI James is over there in the comments harassing me. So, um, yeah, we gotta block James too. Just like we blocked uh, Nathan Clark. Nathan Clark's not allowed on the show no more. So, you know, James is going to be next on the, uh -huh. on, the, on the list. I don't know any of these people. I don't have beef yet. I don't have beef with any of these people yet. <laughs> That's uh, okay. You will. You will. You hear the Canadian accent? Um, and, uh, and Gary, are you currently active? Yes. Are you currently active on Reddit? A big part, a big part of what I, I and think is going to help me get in, like, really understand wet shaving more and understand the community is I try to really be active on any uh, any Wicked Edge thread that like mentions Rockwell and I kind of like lurk everything else. But I'm definitely active on Wicked Edge. And on Monday, I'm doing a AMA on wet shavers and on damn fine shave. We're doing like, cool. like a, oh, I guess both people. I know some people like their forums and some people like Reddit. So we're going to be doing an AMA on both of those. I, ha I, happen, to, okay. I, I happen to think that Reddit is the devil. So is there, any, is there any chance that we will have you a little bit more active, possibly on the Facebook groups? And I, I already have you on I Instagram, but how about Canadian the Canadian wet groups? shavers and North American wet shavers, I want to say. There, there seem to yeah. be so many groups. Um, sure. I, what I struggle with, yeah, what I struggle with a yeah, lot a is lot actually um, like time management around all these things. Like there are simply so many platforms that like you really have to pick and choose your battles. And like, at, at my heart, I, I suppose I am like, ultimately a capitalist and, and like wicked edge is simply it's like seventy eight thousand subscribers so that to me is like the, like it's the most rational use of my time but i totally value the personal connections um that are made on facebook and those one-to-one -one connections that are made on facebook and and you know google plus and all those so it is a question that i'm asking myself like what is the best way that i can add value to those platforms i won't spend mm -hmm. time there if it's not somewhere i can add value that's important to me so sure. just being able to like split properly yeah uh, just a recommendation then for that if you are going to be a part of facebook groups if you ever do enter them razor and brush and shave the man they're both uh, i think approaching close to four thousand uh, uh followers or members uh so those are those are going to be the two groups you'd probably want to be able to spread your word yeah, good to know. Yeah. razor and yeah, brush okay. and yeah. shave the man and definitely again the one-to-one -one connections over there is good uh, I, I like that. It also, yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. Uh, I will definitely be looking into it. Folks, we are winding down. We have five minutes left in today's show. If you have any more questions for Garrett, please get them in now. It looks and like how about a group buy of the Model T? Uh, oh, we yeah. specifically did try to avoid a group buy. Like the highest that you can go on the Kickstarter is two razors. Just, um, we had a few group buys on the 6S and it got, it got iffy. People were like, people, whoever would host the group buy, not shipping out to everyone. It sucks. Stuff like that does happen, um, but I definitely, especially after just shipping out hundreds of thousands of dollars of free successes, I, I don't want, and, and I did replace anyone who didn't get their group by, I shipped other replacement to them. Um, so I, I definitely don't want a similar situation to happen with the Model T, so we just kind of avoided that by making 
uh, group buys kind of off the table for the time being. Makes sense. Um, yeah. Uh, it looks like the next question is for Doug. Oh, uh, guys, this is Gareth's show. Um, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you, James. Yeah, it's a, making it right is kind of an important part of all this for me. Um, obviously, there were some issues with the, the starting up and just I, uh, I think it's an important part of, of running a business to me. If you're not making it right, then the, how do you expect to have like loyal fans, customers, whatever you want to call it? Um, so yeah, that's I, I appreciate the kind of words. Um, I need plans to make a cartridge razor. <laughs> not really. That, that's not a serious question. Just yeah, <laughs> Clearly, you don't know. Who it's not is. April Fool's Day anymore, <laughs> Chris. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's in the cards. Um, so how long have we been in development? The Model T has been in development for about eighteen months. It actually started like right after the success. We knew like as soon as the success kind of. Yeah, it's totally. It's been it's been in the works for a very 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 long time. Rockwell Straits. That's scary. Um, <laughs> uh, it's definitely, it's not like critical path right now. If anything, um, maybe a Chevette, probably not a straight. Okay. Yeah, they are. It's just, I feel like that's like the fastest way to track your reputation is like a straight <laughs> gone that's bad. It. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Gone bad. Well, if you ever need a tester for a straight razor, um, yeah. I am available. Dave, Dave is open FYI. to anything. Real quick, uh, is the soap black like ATG pre-shave soap? Beer shift. I'm sorry, uh, no, it's not. What makes the pre-shave soap black is the uh, inclusion of alkanet root uh, and maca root. That is not in the shave soap. And when the DOC, uh, on the satin DOC, again, this is a similar situation. I'm waiting for my manufacturer to get the job done right. We had a new mold made, and... We're just, we just we're waiting for it to be finished, really, the mold and then the casting and so on and so forth. So I can't give you an exact date. It is coming soon, though. I, I'm going to say I hope in a couple weeks, but I don't know for sure, and I don't want to just hit the green email when available button on the sales page, and all will be well. Okay, folks. Manufacturing is hard. Yep. Yes. Lesson, yes, lesson is. of the day. Another the thing is with manufacturing, support. when you get something manufactured, they have their own quality control team. But we also have our own quality control team yep. too. Yep. So it's that like now my deal too. Exactly. So Rockwell any razor. last words? Yeah, it Rockwell. looks like oh for me. I was just gonna answer this other question quick. Slant razor, it's the same deal as open comb. We just kind of need to see the demand. It's it's like not critical path for me because it's not like the uh it's not like super inclusive to to new shavers. But if there is a lot of demand and it looks like something that we could reasonably manufacture for an okay cost, yeah. definitely uh definitely not opposed. What dealer would carry carry it in Europe? Uh Executive shaving in the UK, and we're announcing the rest of Europe pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. Uh, last words. Um, I'll do it quick. Uh, if you guys haven't, I'd super appreciate if you checked out the Model T. Every single pledge for the Rockwell Model T, shameless plug here, but every single pledge allows us to make the, the razor even better and uh, really add as much value as possible for the shaving community, which has been my goal from day one. So uh, anything that, that people are able to you know, pre-order your Model T now helps us make every single Model T that much better. So that's a that's my deal. Excellent. Excellent. I'll put the link for it over in the comments again. Awesome. Yeah, Thanks, Chris. Links throughout this, folks. If you want to find out more about uh, Rockwell Razors, please go to rockwellrazors.com, and you can also catch Gareth live April twenty third at the Big Shave West in the so flesh. He, yes, he'll be there. Uh, thank you again, all of you, for joining us, especially Gareth. It's been a, a pleasure to get to know you a little bit more. For all of us, get to know you a little more. Just so when we get yeah, there, we're awesome. like old friends. Um, so thank you for all, uh, all of you for tuning into episode thirty nine of the Wet Shavers Roundtable. We'll be back next week with, I believe, Edwin Jagger. Hey, Neil from Edwin Jagger, not Neil, <laughs> but Edwin Jagger nonetheless. Very so nice. thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next week and shave on. 